Welcome back to Hermes Academy. It's me, Stacy, along with Cliff. And I am so excited about teaching this class today because this class, Similar to Us 2, applies to me. And it talks about stinginess. And so that's what we're going to be talking about. We're talking about how having an abundance of things, not necessarily money, um, an abundance can be a blessing, but can it can also be dangerous if you don't use it to help the poor. We're going to get both sides of the story. Yep, yep. So we're going to be talking about that as far as the rich, but we're going to be talking about the obligation that the poor has as, as well, because not only are they, they just in the position of receiving, they have an obligation to not only be um, appreciative, to be thankful, but they have an obligation to go to the Father and entreat Him for these things that the rich has done for them. So those are two things that we're going to be talking about, and it being a similitude, which means that we're comparing two things to each other, we will be using the vine tree as well as the elm tree. The vine tree, which bears fruit, and the elm tree, which does not bear fruit. Okay, so if you're ready, let's go to Similitudes 1. In verse 1, this is where Hermes is talking to an angel and Cliff. I think he's talking to a different angel. I don't think he's talking to the angel of repentance because he says, an angel came to me and says these things. So possibly he's talking um, to an, an, another angel. To but a different angel. To a different angel. But that being said, the angel appeared to him and said, you know, why are you sitting here? Why are you standing here looking at this tree and vine for so long? And him and Hermes is about to have a conversation. He's about to explain some things to Hermes. That starts at 2. Okay. Okay, and 2, Hermes says, well, I'm standing here and I'm comparing uh, the elm tree and the vine tree. And the angel says to him that this elm tree and vine tree was put here as a model for the servants of Yah. You have okay. anything to say about it? Well, yeah, he says uh, these two trees are set for a pattern of the servants of God. Okay, so now, is it saying that we all fit in these two patterns? Are there other three? Or is everybody either rich or poor? Is that, is that kind of what it's saying? I, don't know. I believe that is what it's saying. That either you have an abundance or you don't have an abundance. Either you, you got something to give or you need something. Correct. And once again, we're not necessarily talking about money. We can be talking about an abundance of but crops, clothes, uh, land, uh, prayer, power, prayer. Yeah, there's lots of things. With the first, normally, the first thing we think about is when we talk about wealth and riches, we think automatically what material stuff. Yeah, money. You know, when when a person says that I'm wealthy, they're more than likely is talking about wealthy. Um, about money, but there's so much other things that that you know we can be rich okay, in. So money versus like gold or silver or peas or land or children or love or houses or everything else. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, going on to three. Uh, this is where the angel. Um is about to explain to Hermes and he's about to start using the similitudes. He tells him to listen and pay attention because he's about to he's about to educate him on these things. Okay. Okay. I'll educate him on on the two similitudes, the difference okay. with the vine. The he's about to use the trees. He's okay. about to use the tree, the vine tree and the elm tree as an example. Okay. Okay, so in number 4, I'm going to we're going to read this. Well, let me read it. Okay. He said, this vine, saith he, is fruitful, but the elm is a tree without fruit. Nevertheless, this vine, unless it were set by the elm and supported by it, would not bear much fruit. But lying alone upon the ground, 
was bare but ill fruit, because it did not hang upon the elm. Whereas being supported upon the elm, it bears fruit both for itself and for that. Okay, when I read this verse, my mind automatically went to my tomato plants. Tomato plants. Tomato plants. Because when you have a tomato plant and it grows and it starts producing fruit, if you don't put a cage or some kind of stake around it, those tomatoes are going to fall to the ground and they're going to rot. Okay, because it'd be sitting, yeah, I remember last year mine was on the ground and they always rot when they sit on the ground. So what he's saying here is that though the vine bears fruit, if it does not have the support of the elm tree, which does not bear fruit, and it falls to the ground, it's still going to produce fruit, but those fruit are going to be bad fruit. They're not going to be profitable. Okay. So the example of the elm tree is the example for the rich and the poor. Though the rich has an abundance of things to give, if he does not have the support by the prayers and the um, entreating the Lord and, you know, uh, coming to the Lord and, and, and speaking to him on behalf of the rich, then um, y'all can't, can't give to them. And do you understand what I'm saying? Well, I'm following, yeah. I'm, yeah. I guess it's like, um, well, I, I'll, I'll talk about that later. I'll talk about that later. Okay, let's go on to number five. Okay, let's read this also. See, therefore, how the elm gives no less, but rather more fruit than the vine. How, sir, said I, does it bear more fruit than the vine? Because, said he, the vine being supported upon the elm gives both much and good fruit, whereas if it lay along upon the ground, it would bear but, but little, and that very ill, too. That's saying what we're saying. Each of them need each other. The vine, though it produced fruit, the fruit is going to fall to the ground and it's going to pr pr uh, produce rotten. I mean, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen a tomato that does not uh, grow up on the vine. The fruit that stays on the ground is 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 soft, is tight, is uh, not as plump as the fruit that grows up on the, the stalk. The, the tomato cage it's more uh, plump it's more juicy it's more red because it gets the sun and there's just so much better mm. fruit um, that is produced when it grows up on when it has support okay. when it has support All right. okay. All right. number six okay in number six some of my notes it says um, this similitude is placed for the servants of Yah, and it represents the rich and the poor man. And then Hermas said, to make this clear to me, and the angel said, the rich man has wealth, although towards Yah he is poor. You want to talk about that a little, a little bit? Well, you, you, one thing that since I've, you know, come to try to learn this is I've noticed in a few movies that I saw that and I even heard old people talking about people being paid to pray. You ever heard of it? Paid to pray. Yeah. Where you go to somebody who you wanted prayer mm, and they mm -hmm. would give you they would pray for you mm -hmm. and it was, you know, acceptable or almost um um expected that you would leave the person who prayed for you a small gift because that person was poor. That was a poor person. So mm -hmm. you being the rich old person who didn't have enough power to pray for yourself would go to the person who knew how to pray. And when you did so, you they, you know, would end up giving them something because they were poor people. Now, I guess that's what kind of helped me to understand that, you know, when the person doesn't have, then they pray harder and they, you know, they think about it more. Whereas the person who has everything, you know, they all they basically doing is trying to say thank you and they, you know, having a hard time even doing that. 
Yeah, yeah. In 6, it tells us how the prayers of the rich are lazy and without force. And my mind immediately immediately went back to when we lived in Chattanooga and our income was six figures. And we, I mean, I don't ever remember having a forceful prayer because I think I had or I thought I had everything I needed. You know, I didn't, wasn't on my hands and knees begging and pleading to the Lord and 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 we by many um have, would have been considered rich or had an abundance of and I don't remember you know having a relationship with the Lord where I was pleading and begging to him for 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 different things and um yeah my prayers were lazy I know they were you, very I know lazy. They were, prayed, they were basically you know. prayers like, you know, I prayed because I think, you know, that it was in it's been ingrained in me to pray, but my prayers were basically, you know, because I was obligated. Was, Thank you, was, you, Lord, and you, move on. You were so spoiled in Chattanooga State. What would you? What did you have to pray for? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I'm sure I prayed. I know I prayed. You know, I know the thing I prayed for the hardest was at BMW. <laughs> You laugh because you know it's true. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, mean, I mean, yeah, yeah, that is so true. I mean, you know, it wasn't no no tears and, and forceful prayers. Yeah, it was very that. lazy. Yeah. You get hungry for a little while, boy. Yeah, yeah. And now the opposite, since we decided to, or the Lord bought us out of that lifestyle, and the lifestyle where we're living on an off-grid homestead and things just aren't necessarily things are different our prayers are uh sincere we're praying with force we're you know we're in the position where we um our prayers are not lazy yeah yep so so that's what six is talking about okay let's go into seven All right, you want to read seven? It says, When therefore the rich man reaches out to the poor those things which he wants. Oh. When, the, when therefore the rich man reaches out to the poor those things which he wants, the poor man prays unto the Lord for the rich, and God grants unto the rich man all his things, or all good things, because the poor man is rich in prayer. And his requests have great power with the Lord. Right, right. So when the rich man gives to the poor man, the poor man is able to go to the to the father on behalf of the rich and make an entreatment to the Lord. And the Lord, um, so both of them are get, getting something. Right. Both of them are yeah. getting something. The rich man is getting something from the poor. The poor man is getting something from the rich. It don't always seem like that, but right. Right, right. right. The rich man is giving something to the poor. The poor man is getting something from Yah. And the Yah, Cliff, we'll go on to see later what the Yah, what the father is going to give to the rich man. And it's so much more than what, um, than this, the stuff that he's giving away. Right. So much more than what he's given away. Right, right, right. Okay, let's go on to eight. Number eight. Read it. Uh, yeah, you can read it. It says, Then the rich man ministers all things to the poor, because he perceives that he is heard by the poor, and he, the more willingly and without doubting, affords him what he wants, and takes care that nothing be lacking. Okay. It says the rich man ministers all things to the poor because he is preceded that he is heard by the Lord. I think you say he's heard by the poor, but he is heard by the Yah. So he doesn't, he understands that by giving to the poor, the rich man understands that by giving to the poor, he is heard by the father because he knows that his prayers are lazy and he's basically just giving a thank you and moving on that he understands that by giving to the poor and he has no skepticism he has no doubting and 
um, he's taken care of. Mm. He's taken care of. The poor is not lacking anything. There's nothing he's wanting. And the rich man, though he might not understand, and, and he possibly does understand, he's mm -hmm. about to receive. He's about to receive a blessing. I know some. I mean, there's a lot of people that receive. That's why you see people like Bill Gates and all these people giving a lot of stuff away. People who you know give a lot of stuff away. You see those people who die poor. And they they understand. They understand that this is what this is what is about to happen. They understand they're supposed to be giving stuff away. <laughs> right, 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 right. Okay, number nine. We're moving on, Cliff. Okay, you want to read number nine? And the poor man gives thanks unto the Lord for the rich, because they both do their work from the Lord. Okay, I have in my notes, and the poor man gives thanks to the Lord for the rich, because they both do their work from Yah. This is both both of it is a work, work. Okay. Both are giving. Okay, so the one that's praying and the one that's giving, they both doing work. They're both doing work. And though the rich man, though, though, the person, you know, I, I hate to say rich because when you say rich, our minds just automatically, I think we're, what is the word that you, we're, we're automatically in tune to think money. Conditioned. Yeah, we're automatically conditioned to think money. So though the person that has the abundance think that he's giving more, he's actually not because the poor person is giving so much more because he's actually going to the father on behalf of the rich. So though you think that you're giving, you know, you have hesitations and, you know, doubt and, and, and you don't want to give, go to your closet and get your best dress out to give this person. Um, they're actually doing you so much more, mm, you right, know, so okay. it's so much better what they're doing for you than that you know, that okay. gift that you, you have given them. Okay. All right. Okay, moving on to number 10. It says, With men, therefore, the elm is not thought to give any fruit, and they know not, neither understand that its company being added to the vine, the vine bears a double increase, both for itself and for the elm. Okay. We... As people do not understand that our fellowship with the poor, this is what I got out of this. We do not understand that our company, our fellowship with the poor actually doubles our increase, doubles our, um, uh, our abundance, both for ourselves and for the vine, whether you're vine or elm, you actually double your, your increase. You know, there's something, there's a scripture that says, you will give and I'll give back to you uh, pressed down shaking running over so this is not saying not only are you gonna get the running over but you're gonna get a double increase right, okay. of okay. Um, of the blessings of the abundance of the gifts that you've given um, given to the elm well let me ask now the elm the elm which the elm is the rich guy or the poor guy the elm is the poor guy because so it says it says the elm is not thought to give any fruit Okay. Yeah. What does that mean? The poor is not necessarily thought to have anything to give. Okay. But you're saying it's not true. Okay. That is not true. All right. That is not true. I got all you now. All right. Go on. Let's go on to 11. It says, even so, the poor praying unto the Lord for the rich are heard by him, and their riches are increased because they minister to the poor of their wealth. They are, therefore, both made partakers of each other's good works. They both again is saying, I think this this is these two verses are saying like a re repeat. They both receive of each other's good works. Okay. They both receive of each other's good works. And this is what I wrote down. I said this is about how each receives. The poor receives from the rich. The rich receives from the father. The rich gives to the poor. And then the poor entreats or prays for the rich. And then about right here, the next verse, number 12, we're going to see what the father does for the rich. 12 says, whosoever, therefore, shall do these things, he shall not be forsaken by the Lord, 
but shall be written in the book of life. Whosoever does these things shall not be forsaken. And we know when you when we speak of forsaken, we're speaking of denied. Okay. So whosoever shall not be, whosoever shall do these things, he will not be denied by the Father, but shall be written in the book of life. Okay. All if right. you do these things where the rich gives to the poor and the poor who I believe is obligated, which speak, he said he shall, is obligated to be thankful and appreciative and go to the Father on behalf of the rich. Okay. All right. All right. Number 13. It says, happy are they who are rich and perceive themselves to be increased. For they that is sensible, for he that is sensible of this will be able to minister somewhat to others. He that is aware of this okay, will be down. able to minister. Sensible? It says sensible. It says sensible, aware in your Sensible, book. yeah. No, it oh, does say okay. sensible. So sensible, but sensible means aware of it, oh, okay. understanding of it, will be able to minister, give somewhat to others. So if they really understand that they are wealthy and where they're getting it from. Right, right. They'll be able to to give to others and therefore increase in what they have and the abundance that they have. And let me again say that we not, we're not necessarily talking about money. We're talking about the things that you have and abundance of, be it as for us, it might be crops, or, you know, land, uh, clothing, labor. Um, what you have in an abundance of give to others, give to the poor, give to those that are in need and watch and see what the father does for you. Not, and he lists the things that he will do for you where he said that he will give back to you, but he will also add your name to the book of life. Okay. All right. Very good. Oh, did you get anything from the class? Yeah, I got a lot out of the class. <laughs> uh, the, no, and, and I was sitting here thinking, though, when you talk about the violin, I, I kind of thought of my own example. Okay. Well, the, we got all of these scovenines growing around here. Right. And and we got all of these hedge bushes growing around. And know? wisteria. And, well, I'm saying the, the scovenine is like the, the vine here. Right, where okay. Where it, it has the fruit. and But it's all draped all up on the hedge bushes. You know, the head, and, you know, and the, they're so far up in the air, you know, I thought about cutting, cutting the hedge was down, pulling it out with the truck and just leave the vine there. But the vine, it'll be on the ground now and it won't produce as much fruit. It won't produce as much, as much fruit. And when the fruit falls to the ground, it's going to rot. I mean, it's going to bruise it. It's going to rot. Um, yeah, so much, so, so we much. We got to leave both of them out there. Yeah, we got to leave both of them out there to our dismay because you know we thought we were going to get rid of the hedge bushes but this is you telling get rid us the hedge bushes you get rid of the, the uh scovenines too yeah oh, and you ain't got no wine <laughs> <laughs> very good class babe. okay i hope somebody was able to receive something from it praise praise the lord for it what is this book of life thing you tell me. Ah, you tell me. I, I, I'm going to put you on the spot. You tell me what is this oh, book I'll of life. I'll pull the trigger first. I got you first before you got me. The I didn't have life. a chance to go, you know, to that reference that you told me about to read about the book of life. So, But I know you've re read about it. Well, let me, well, let me, let me go see what I do know about the book of life real, real quick. There's eight different references to it. Okay. You got uh, Philippians 4.3 says, I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women whom labored with me in the gospel with Clement also and with other my fellow laborers whose name are in the book of life. Read the next. Revelations oh, 3 oh, oh, and 5. Yeah, it is. Go ahead. Revelations 3 and 5. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Uh -huh. And all the, that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from before the foundation of the world. Talking about those who 
worship in the image of the beast. Revelation 17 and 8. And the beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose name were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was and is not, and yet is. No, no, guys. How many more we got? And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened. Which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to the works. Now we're getting a little somewhere here now in 20, verse 12. That's like I come back to that one. Revelations 20, 12. Revelations 20 and 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Clev, this here is saying that just by giving, our names can be written in the book of life. What what's saying that? This here is this Hermes? 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 Is this what is that what he's saying? Yeah. B by giving our names. So this is very important. Giving? Yeah. Because I mean, well, let's let's get let's let's come back to that question too. Uh I'm sure we almost finished here. We got a couple of more. It says that there shall in no wise enter into all anything that defileth, neither whoso whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie. A day which are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I probably need to read that one again. But go ahead. And Revelation 22 and 19. I think this is the last one. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy. God shall take away his part out of the book of life. And out of the holy city. And from the things which are written in this book. Okay. Now so that's all the times that the Bible mentioned the, the book of life. But the one I found was to be the most interesting was this one up here where he says that I saw um, these books were opened. These books were opened and we think of the seals. Okay, y'all. Well, thanks everybody for um, tuning in. Um, you know, we ask that you will subscribe, comment, um, hit the notifications and um, just pray for the ministry. Pray that y'all will rightly let us rightly teach his word um, that it will be a blessing to you as well as um, to us so Cliff you have any last words very good class Stacey. very good very good I don't care if nobody say anything or not <laughs> that, that was pretty good I'm I impressed. think I'm I think I, in teach, I enjoy well I did enjoy teaching it but I enjoyed learning about it and you are so my husband is so wise oh, because yeah. he uh he you says that up. if you if you if you if you read it then you will learn more about it and I actually read it and wrote it out and now I guess that's just the way that I study you can edit this out that's the way that I study and so it did help me out a lot to you know work on my stinginess <laughs> oh, okay so you learn something about stinginess yeah I learned something about stinginess we're gonna see Stacy because yeah I mean I, I meet I meet Stacy everybody in this town is related to my wife I mean everywhere we go everybody is her cousin but not all of them have said there's a few of them who grew up with her side by right. side the first thing they say is she's stingy and they like She's still stingy, ain't she? And I'm like, yes, yeah, she is still stingy. Oh, my goodness. Stingy. That's bad. That's bad. So, yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to close out and uh, see you at the next class. Okay. Similar to 3. Let me get them hearts out of here. Okay. Similar to 3. Shalom. Hermes Academy. Power, patience, continence, and faith. We teach virtue.